Welcome to the playlist for ecosystems, meta cycling, and energy flow. This confidence assessment in Summit Platform for Middle School Science focuses on general ecology. So even if you're not a Summit student, you can take advantage of this if you need to learn about things such as food webs, food chains, and energy pyramids, and how they help represent the way that matter and energy flow through ecosystems and the roles of organisms within that. The second objective we're going to cover talks about the special oil decomposers in recycling the matter in ecosystems. And lastly, we're going to look at the actual biochemical cycles of the major elements that are needed for life and how they too have to do with matter cycling through ecosystems and energy flowing through it. Now, this is related to another uh, work, work series that we talked about the organisms matter cycling energy flow when we had a microscopic look and how organisms play a role in this through the processes of photosynthesis and cellular respiration which is what the series really focused on this one will take a macro look and look at the whole thing from the ecosystem point of view let's start by talking about the diagrams that show the flow of matter and energy motion through the ecosystem and through the organisms which are a part of them starting with an energy pyramid now, energy pyramid is a pyramid that shows the total amount of energy available at each of the feeding levels of an ecosystem. A feeding level is also called a trophic level because troph means eat. And so that's essentially what it is. Now, whether you're looking at a pyramid, a chain, or a web, each layer of it is considered a trophic level. The first basic trophic level is where you have all the producers, like bacteria, cyanobacteria, uh, phytoplankton, and algae. Cyanobacteria is a special type of photosynthetic bacteria, which is the cousins of the chloroplast that lives inside of all of the algae and plants in the ecosystem, right? So in a way, bacteria is the one doing the whole thing. We talked about that in the organisms play series. But anyways, producers are the ones making the food, capturing the sunlight. They are the ones bringing the energy into the ecosystem and building the food out using that energy. Everybody else is considered a consumer because they eat these producers. And then, as you can see though, every layer that you go up, there's less and less energy available. So the producers are the ones that with the most energy because they get it directly from the source. The consumers have less energy and then less after that and less after that. Why? We'll talk about that in more detail in the coming slide over here. But essentially, for the most part, some of the energy gets used up or lost as heat as you go up the layers by the animals and organisms living through it. So that's why as you go to the top and you're an apex predator, which is the predator at the top that no one eats except for decomposers and scavengers once it dies. In other words, it's not predated upon. Think shark, think, uh, uh, think uh, lion, right? Thinks the top of the, the, the food, uh, the food uh, pyramid or the energy pyramid. Now, there's a few more terms here that I want to clarify. Carnivore refers to something that only eats consumers. Right, So these are things that don't eat directly from producers. Herbivores is used as a general term to refer to things that only eat producers. But technically, they're eaters of grass and herbs like cows and, and a lot of herder, herding animals uh, or even a grasshopper. Right, But there are organisms that eat from producers without eating grass. Like they eat fruits like a lot of monkeys. They're called frugivores or flowers like a honey uh like a yeah like a bee <laughs> or a gosh hummingbird that's the one i was thinking of they're flor florivores because they eat from the flowers but regardless of whether you're a herbivore frugivore florivore if you eat from the producers you're going to be at that first uh, layer above it which is called the primary consumers uh, a couple of other terms fungivores are eaters of fungus and insectivores are eaters of insects just throwing it out there. But what you're going to actually need to know, though, is that this is the same thing if you look at it in food chains or food webs. Producers will be the start of the chain or the webs. They're the ones that are actually making food from the nutrients using this, the energy of the sun. Now, there are ecosystems of the earth that are not reliant on the sun. And we'll talk more about that later. But in general, we call such things autotrophs because remember, trough means eating. And auto means self. So if you eat by yourself, you make your own food, you are a producer. So that's another word for that. 
Then you have primary consumers, which remember are the herbivores, fl 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 uh, frugivores, or florivores, the ones that eat directly from the producers. They are going to be things like grasshoppers, like deer, right, on an ecosystem that eats directly from the grass. Then you have things that eat that, like a frog. That's a secondary consumer. And in this case, it's acting like a carnivore because it only eats grasshoppers. It doesn't also eat uh, the grass. If it did, uh, it would have that term that we call omnivores, which are the ones that sometimes act like primary consumers, sometimes act like secondary or tertiary consumers. So in other words, they eat both uh, consumers and producers. But the frog is definitely a carnivore because it, it eats doesn't eat grass. Now, then you have a tertiary consumer, which eats the frog, like a snake. And then the snake might be eaten by a hawk, which would be a quaternary or a final level consumer. Now, all of these things eventually die and get eaten up by decomposers. So in a way, the matter flows from the producers, which broke, broke, got the nutrients, made the food, and each thing will eat the other thing. And through that, the actual atoms or the matter moves from organism to organism through the food. And in between, the energy that's inside of the food also gets uh, transferred across the organisms, except the energy gets used up and lost as heat with each transfer because organisms need to survive and use that energy. And so with each successive layer, the less and less energy available, which is why the pyramid gets narrower as it goes to the top and why less and less animals can be supported uh, at the top of the, of the chains because they are going to be larger. That means requiring more energy, but there are less energy available, so there's going to be fewer of them. So as you go up the trophic levels or the feeding levels, you're going to have less and less organisms in each level. A web is kind of like the same thing, except it will show all the different uh, chains in the ecosystem, all in one integrated diagram that shows all the feeding relationships uh, in the between the listed and organisms uh, within an ecosystem. So let's review all of this and then talk about the way that the energy is acting over here. And Okay, so the sources of energy for most ecosystems on Earth is going to be the sun. Now, there are exceptions. There are life forms living in extreme environments like near volcanic vents uh, and very salty environments, very acid environments. Uh, we call them thermophiles, acidophiles, halophiles. They are auto there are autotrophs in those environments which do not use sunlight. They're called chemotrophs because they break, the, they make their food out of other chemical processes which aren't based on photosynthesis. They are descendant and related to the ancient life forms of Earth that existed before photosynthesis were a thing. And they're still around, colonizing all kinds of extreme environments in this planet. But most of terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems are going to be based on producers which are using the sunlight, based on phototrophs, which are organisms that use the sunlight to make food, right? Now, uh, the difference between food webs, food chains, and in energy pyramids, once again, is that a pyramid shows the decrease in energy, biomass, or numbers as you go up the trophic levels, as you can see uh, over here. And you also shows food chains show one pathway of matter and energy transfer through an ecosystem, and food webs show multiple pathways of matter and energy transfer throughout the ecosystem. Right? So um, now, in which direction does energy flow? And what, what you kind of diagram you look at is going to move up the pyramid, up the trophic levels, from organism to organism, starting from producers all the way to the apex predator that eats uh, everything and doesn't get eaten. Now, technically, there's also decomposers in this picture, which we're going to talk about in the next uh, objective. So I'll reserve more of that to then. But decomposers will technically eat from all levels. And you can see that happening over here. And so through that, the matter is back transferred back to the primary producers. So I'm hinting what we're going to talk about in the next objective already. Now, notice that the energy that comes in does not cycle back. It gets used up, uh, lost as heat or used up to power the life processes of organisms. All right? All right. So on the trophic levels, why is it that as you go up, you have less energy? Once again, organisms use energy to move, to keep warm to build things, and ultimately, all of the energy is either lost to less useful energies such as heat. And that's where the energy goes, back to the environment as heat. Uh, now, what does that mean about what happens to the total number of biomass or number of organisms near higher levels? As you go up the trophic levels, um, there's less biomass and organisms available, 
since there's less energy to support them. And, and because, by the way, predators tend to be larger because they have to actually eat the smaller things. Um, and that, that eat smaller things, that eat smaller things, that eat the smaller things. When you get to the top, especially in aquatic ecosystems, you tend to have these very large organisms. And therefore, even less of them can be supported since you're going to need a lot of energy to support that biomass. Now, what happens to the number of prey, therefore, if you actually uh, introduce new predators? So if you put more predators at the top of the pyramid, that's going to consume the energy from the bottom, and the numbers of prey should decrease. But then, what happens to the number of predators if there's not enough prey? The prey will also the predators will also decrease, causing a collapse of the upper levels if there's less available energy at the bottom. So as we move things from the bottom, it affects the rest of the entire food web, which is why it's so important to be careful about what we do to ecosystems, because changing a single organism could send shockwaves throughout the whole thing. One more thing I'm going to talk about here that's not really in the content system, but it's important, <clears throat> is why eating vegetarian can actually have a positive effect on the environment. Because if you eat directly from primary consumers, there's more energy available at that level, right? than if you eat from a cow, which is at the next level. So you actually um, think of it this way. The cows eating the grass and then moving around, using that energy, a lot of the energy that's in the grass field gets wasted by the life of the cow. If you bypass the cow, you can feed more people eating directly from the producers. So in a way, vegetarianism has an advantage. So if you uh, eat less meat or no meat, you will reduce the, 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 the impact on ecosystems by having less need for more land to feed people. Or, or alternatively, you can feed more people if more of us eat directly from the producers. So that's all interesting stuff that has to do with this topic. All right, on the next objective, we'll talk more about the role of decomposers and why they play a crucial role in recycling nutrients in the ecosystem. I'll see you guys there.